Uh, Pikes Peak is requiring all racers to carry a jacket this year. Well, this, this spot is as good as any. I mean, come on, by a creek, flowing water, unbelievable, just seeking beauty out here. But hopefully you can hear me uh, because of the water behind me. All right, let's dive in. Fall running jackets, let's do it now. Question of the day, what is your favorite fall running jacket? Now, what is fall? For me, roughly 40 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, R roughly, all right, it's not, that's not exact. Uh, you know, obviously depending on where you live around the world, that'll be impacted by that. And you always have to ask yourself at the beginning when we're talking about outerwear, and by the way, through the whole research process to develop DGR running gear, I am learning so, so much about the different, fat, not just fabrics, but the textiles used to source polyester uh you know spandex and the combinations that go into all these different pieces of outerwear that we runners get to use that helps us go enjoy the beauty around the world no matter what the weather is in our region and that kind of okay here we go questions to ask yourself as you're listening to me talk about these jackets first of all i always i always bring this up first do you burn hot or do you burn cold I burn cold, meaning I get cold easily. In fact, today, the reason I wore this jacket right here is because it might rain and it's it's pretty crisp out, okay? And this is my, my most water repellent jacket. We'll talk about it here in a minute, but I don't like to be cold. But some people, when they go out and run, they burn pretty darn hot. So that will impact the types of jacket jackets that you buy. And I will make sure I'm specific. Oh yeah, titles, titles, titles today read the titles they're very very they're going to be very very important okay next point is what's the pace you're running are you running fast are you running slower is it easy day hard day threshold day uh vertical day all these things and actually vertical tip of the day as you rise up in elevation that can really impact the temperature that you're running in so keep that in mind in the fall in the autumn months uh fall months uh as far as the temperature that you might experience on a trail run, okay? Uh, and last but not least, of course, is the weather where you live. The, you know, what's the average temperature? Is it, is it uh, more windy in the fall? Here in Colorado, it's actually less windy in the fall compared to the springtime. And then, uh, of course, of course the, uh, the moisture that's in the air. And just one more point is, you know, a lot of times you can get away with a long sleeve in the fall, all right? It's the winter where just a long sleeve is, you know, for me, I can't do that. Uh, I'll get too cold. But in the fall, I can, I can often get away with that. However, it's when the wind picks up and there's a, or there's just a little bit of moisture happening, whether the humidity's rising and it's just cold out and it can bite through those long sleeves. That's where these fall running jackets come into play. And speaking of which, let's dive in. The Mammut Felsgrat Hybrid Windbreaker is what I'm wearing right now. A company, a Swiss company, okay? And I think they've been around a long time, like 150 years. Here's some more information on the screen for you. And the reason I love this jacket is it's the most water repellent. Now here in Colorado, you probably haven't seen me wear this very much because we don't get a lot of rain here in Colorado, it's, okay? If it, yeah, it just doesn't happen. And so I don't wear it as often as some of these other ones, but when it does, it's the most water repellent jacket that I own, running jacket that I own. And love, love, love the cuffs. A good cuff is a, is a I'm gonna talk a lot about cuffs today. It's a, it's a make or break for me for running jackets because I, I cannot stand wind and moisture going up my arm. And so a good cuff that wraps around your, your wrist is absolutely essential. All right, moving on to the next jacket. It is the Innovate Race Shell HZ, okay? This would be my go-to racing jacket if, um, if I knew it was gonna be a little cooler and it was gonna rain in the race. Again, 
I don't train in this or race in this a ton because it is very, very water resistant and it's gonna keep a lot of the moisture out. Maybe not 100%, but pretty darn close, okay? It's 100 grams. Innovate is out of Great Britain. Uh, it fulfills mandatory. This is really interesting. So for all the Asper, you know, people that want to race these big ultra races, you know, in the mountains, a lot of times you have to carry a kit with you in your in your uh, your your vest or your backpack, uh, a mandatory race kit. This fulfills the mandatory race kit jacket, okay? So keep that, that's what they share on their website. So keep that in mind if you have aspirations to do, you know, uh, Hard Rock or UTMB or any of these big, big mountain races. It's 100% polyester with PU membrane and it is uh, very, very water resistant. So good work there, Innovate, love that jacket. Moving on, oh yeah, Sea Dawn Gale jacket. Who remembers this jacket uh, for training for Rotterdam, and this is my, this is my go-to faster workout windbreaker. Love, love, love it. Here's some footage on your screen, and um, now it's not water. It's not. It's really not waterproof or water. It's just a windbreaker, okay? And Seed On, I believe, is an American company based out of Wyoming. Oh yeah, and I will link to all the full reviews or. Uh, uh, products down below in the description for these jackets. 100 grams, micro ripstop fabric. Um, again, this is kind of my go-to workout jacket when I know it's going to be windy and I know it's not going to rain on me, okay? Does that make sense? So this is, this is not something I would wear when it's about to rain or it's about to mist, okay? There you go. So I actually wear that jacket a lot because here in Colorado, we don't get a lot of moisture. Oh, shout out. Here we go. Come on now. Pikes Peak Week. Pikes Peak Week. Oh, my, my. Woo! Pikes Peak Ascent. Pikes Peak Marathon going down. It's unbelievable. Well, this year, 2022, they are requiring a kit, all right? And it's only a 26 mile race. We're not talking about a 100 mile race through the through the Alps, okay? But yes, uh, Pikes Peak is requiring all racers to carry a jacket this year because the race is happening one month later compared to uh, 2021. Therefore, what was gonna be my Pikes Peak Marathon racing jacket is the Mont Bel Tachyon Parka, all right? Not saying that right, probably. I believe, isn't Mont Bel, I think I learned is a Japanese company. I didn't know that before I bought this jacket. And I, I sourced this jacket from DGR. Thank you, I did all this, all this asking on Twitter, all over the place. Like, what is the lightest windbreaker in the world. That's what I was looking for for Pikes Peak. And this is what I found, okay? So there's the name, there's the stats as far as the composition of the material. Very, very lightweight, 72 grams. That's a butter my bread moment right there. Like it is amazing. So I cannot wait to race in this jacket. Uh, whenever I get back to racing and the, the temperatures are cool, we're talking probably, I would say like below 40 degrees, no, sorry, below 45 degrees and there's a little wind in the air, okay? I would definitely, uh, I would put this jacket on in a heartbeat. Love, love, love this jacket. Oh man, uh, I, I did train in it this uh, before I had this injury, but not gonna be using it this year. Okay, moving on a little quicker here. Say Sky X Le Fee Pace Jacket. This is a jacket that I would wear transitioning from fall to winter, okay? And I just wanna mention, it has these pinholes at the back, so you get some good air ventilation back here. Great feature, Say Sky. A, t a company out of Denmark, I do believe, okay? And, oh yeah, I almost forgot. Remember what I was saying about a good cuff. This is the best cuff that I know of, and I, that's why I, I just love training in this jacket. But again, this would not be like October jacket. This is late November, just before winter really hits, and because it's a little thicker, the overall composition of the fabric. Uh, but this cuff here, you, it has a thumb hole. If I ever design a jacket, or even a long sleeve for runners, it will, every single piece of garment will have a thumb hole. Love, love, love that feature on the cuff. Great job there, Say Sky. Love this jacket. Oh, it's just a great, and a great hood as well. Onward we go. Okay, I'm gonna go a little quicker here through these remaining jackets because um, they're a little, they're jackets that are a little older. So I've talked about them in the past. The Solomon jacket, here we go. Uh, why do I love this jacket? There's the information on your screen. I love this jacket because of this uh, spandex that wraps around your tush, your rump, your backside, okay? So a lot of times with running jackets, 
they can creep up your back. I can't stand that. Not the case in this Solomon jacket. Um, so it, it wraps around your rump and it stays there just to keep the wind from going up your back. Love that feature. Good job there. And also, once again, great cuffs there around your wrist and also some air ventilation right above your wrist. Moving on next. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. And again, these are all listed below. John G, all right? I believe they're out of, uh, is it Massachusetts, I do believe? So uh, kind of a, a not as well known. Great, um, oh my goodness, wow. I totally forgot about that. Wow, great ventilation in the back, like incredible. Probably the best air ventilation in the back. This is a jacket just to take the edge off and there's no hood. Sometimes, depending on the weather, depending on the wind, I don't want a hood. I mean, because it's just kind of in the way, it's flopping in the wind, and I don't even want to mess with a hood. That's when I wear this jacket from John G, okay? There's some more information on the composition of the jacket. Oh, great job there, John G. Nike Trail, here we go. The reason I brought this one out is because of the glove that is built in. Talk about some innovation there. So you, sometimes, again, you just don't want to mess with extra gloves. These are just built-in gloves right to the jacket. Kind of a cool feature. So good work there, Nike. So, oh yeah, and the zippers. You know, sometimes you need to pull out, I don't know, who knows what, a GoPro in my case, or what have you. This zipper is very, it has some great innovation with this uh, strap there to unzip. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Love that jacket. And last but not least, we've yet to test, okay? Mountain Hardware, send me this. Are they out of Utah? I'm not exactly sure. Mount Hardware, I'm excited to test this jacket this fall. And I, I suspect this will be like early November. Not, not, so not, er, not October, not, not about winter, but like right in that early November time frame, probably like 40 to 40, no, 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 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. And again, depending on the pace, depending on the wind, depending on what's happening, around me. All right, there you go, Mount Hardware. Thank you, can't wait to test that jacket out in 2022. Ask the question of the day, uh, onward we go. I look forward to reading your answers because there's so many running jackets out there. Uh, but as I continue to test, I will keep you updated on what I'm learning on the different compositions of the fabrics and how they are reacting to the, the water resistance, the wind resistance, and then also just functionality with respect to carrying gear, um, you know, sorry, carrying um, gels, et cetera, et cetera, out there wherever you are training. All right, onward we go. We will toss it to, um, we'll toss it to the winter running gear playlist. Since winter is coming, uh, winter running gear playlist right there, right there, right there. Uh, where do we go? See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.